at our screen that the timing here is adding and subtracting um, a couple degrees from that 18 degree point, and that's okay. What we're finding is that it's using the spark timing to fine tune the engine's torque output so that it holds and maintains the desired idle speed at 850. We see right now the, the engine speed is moving around here, plus or minus probably 20, 30 RPMs from target, and it's using the spark timing feedback to be able to get us there. Now notice the IEC position is moving slowly because the idle control motor position, the idle control motor airflow contribution, is more of a course adjustment. We want to find that that adjusts very slowly while the spark timing feedbacks very quickly. We can go in and actually change how quick the spark timing feedback is going to be based on, if we go into our idle control here, what the proportional and derivative terms are doing. So if I go in here, let me just demonstrate this real quick. I don't want to data log, I want to hit the toggle panel. Let's go and hit our derivative term. The derivative is going to be how quickly it changes the timing in relation to how quickly the engine speed's moving. And then the proportional is going to be changing the timing in relation to how far we're off in the air from the target. So this is going to be the rate of change in RPM, and this is going to be how far that is going to be off from the target. If I go here from 80, or from 60 to 80 here, and I get more aggressive with it, you'll find that the spark timing will start to jump faster and faster right here. Now actually, what we might need to do here is send that changes. It looks like it is a live change. Some of these changes aren't live, so that was a live change. So by going in here and making my derivative term a little bit more aggressive, it'll, add, it'll make the spark timing here feedback a little bit more aggressive. Now the default values of 40 and 60 in the LS files work pretty well for most any cam profile. But if you have a really large cam that's very aggressive, you might need to get more aggressive with the spark timing feedback. And as a result here, you could bump up your derivative term and make that a little bit higher, which is going to be changing the timing quicker in relation to how fast the engine speed's changing from the target or the, the idle control, or the, uh, the actual engine speed to the idle target is changing the air. That'll make it more aggressive. So we're seeing that kind of a little bit uh, model right there. Um, some other things we can talk about here, since fuel and spark seem like they're good right now, since we got that kind of nailed down uh, and everything looks good, let's take a look real quick again here. Closed loop comp is only taking out 3%, plus or minus 5% is what we want to see here at idle, um, so that looks good. Let me go ahead and just shut it off real quick here. Let me go ahead and turn it on. And if we jump in here to our idle control settings, we're going to find here the startup IAC position. So, very clear here. When we're going to fire off the engine, we're commanding 75% airflow contribution through the idle control motor. And then it's going to be holding that, that 75% airflow contribution for four seconds and then decaying away over four seconds. Let's go ahead and try this real quick again here. I'm just going to fire it up and we're going to go ahead. Let me actually probably bring that toggle panel up here again. We're going to go ahead and see what's going to happen. So 75% is what it's holding at. You'll notice it'll hold it for four seconds. It'll dissipate it away over another four seconds. Let's see what the RPM flares do. So if it goes up, it goes too high, we can calm down how much airflow contributions under the IC park settings for the coolant temperature we're at. Um, or if we want it to hold longer, we could go here and say the hold time to eight or 10 seconds. So it hold, flares up and holds it and then slowly decays away. Or we can keep the hold time at four seconds and make the decay time and make it taper back into idle a little bit slower. We could go and extend that to eight seconds or 10 seconds. Let's go take a look at this real quick here again. Let's fire it. Now it's cranking and not firing very, very well right there. Let me go ahead and just key cycle it real quick. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.